What is up, Alex Bangkok? Yeah. Live from across the pond. Yeah. We're talking NFL, baby. Tell them, Alex. Where kicking is only a small part of the game. Small part of the game. This week we're talking NFL. Woo. Rams of LA, yeah. Birds of Arizona have fly. And we have Coach Sean McVay mm. on the show this morning. Oh. He's young and sexy, baby. Ah. Full of energy, full of swing. Known to break a few hearts here and there. Mm -hmm. Tight and compact. Ah. Body of Daniel Craig with the ass of Thomas Cruz. It's tight, Alex. I like it. Maybe you're in your celly, snapping off about his hair game and the gel he uses to spike it up like a slippery porcupine. Sure I am. The ladies swoon. Mm. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold uh -oh. on. Uh -oh. Be careful, ladies. Hide your kids. Huh? Adrian Peterson is also here. Oh no. And he's turning these lads into whipping posts. Cut the switch. Bruce Arians has let Daddy no games through, and it's a fiasco. There's kids everywhere, Alex. They're flying everywhere. Carson Palmer's here. No Blake Bortles. He's no Beetle, baby. Ah, no Beetle. But he's an overaged peach pie. <laughs> ah, that's right. A ratty old peach pie. Ratty. Just holding it together. Hold it together. Alex Bangkok. Talking NFL live from across the pond, and this is Piff on the Blitz. Where the way there? Before I ran up in the building, talking way back. I stay late night, dreaming about the payback. All I wanna do is get rich. Hey, 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 yo. I ain't looking for a lick. Hey, 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 hey. I'm about to for the shit. Hey, 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 Settle down now, settle down. Settle down, everybody quiet. Shut up. My name's Cliff Klingsbury. It's probably a real guy, I think. Well, I've, I am a real guy. Shut, shut your mouth, young man. Uh, episode 7, Piff on the Blitz. Welcome to the show. Condensed version this week. What, what do you mean, condensed version? Means I'm juggling a lot of shit. Shut your mouth. Sit down. Quiet now. Yeah, you know, all you kids do is disrespect things nowadays. And you know, back, back, in, back when I was growing up, I said, shut the fuck up! Quiet now. Go to sleep. Go to, go to sleep. Week seven, uh, picks were really bad. How about that? 49 and 40 is what we are now. We were 43 and 32, I think, and we lost. I think we went six and eight this week. You know, Aaron Rodgers went out. He's going to be gone for the season. He broke his collarbone. That's the big news. Uh, he got he got carted off, was cussing fucking people out. He, you know, obviously when you're, you know, done for the season, you're not going to be happy about it. But he went out of the game. That screwed our Packers pick, uh, pff, you know, you know, fuck his collarbone, right? Uh, but the Ravens lost in overtime. That was a close one to the Bears. And uh, the Falcons imploded in the second half. They were up 17 to nothing and ended up losing to the Dolphins. And then the Broncos, surprisingly, got dominated by the Giants. Uh, ben McAdoo gave up play calling. And now see what happens when you, when you, when you stop coaching. How about you fucking leave the team? Because <laughs> they probably do a lot better without you. So our picks were a little screwy this week. And, and nope, didn't expect the Steelers to beat the Chiefs. And they did. They showed up. And they showed up. See, they show up in big games, and then they lose to teams they shouldn't lose to. That's what we said before. So we're 49-40 and 40 going forward, and it's it's frustrating that we were really far ahead. We were doing really well in these last couple weeks. These last three weeks really have really shit. It really screwed things up and put the... It's, it's like pouring coffee into the computer. Um, so we'll see what happens in week seven. Uh, but that the big news, Aaron Rodgers got injured and, and impacts all Packers players. If you're a fantasy owner, if you're, you know, doing weekly fantasy lineups, you know, Packers players are going to be tough to pinpoint. Where's Brett Hundley going to throw the ball next? You know, people are saying Martellus Bennett's going to get more touches, uh, you know, or targets because, you know, because of the injury. They might use him as a valve. Uh, you know, it's it's more difficult on receivers like Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson on the outside just because of the timing thing. Uh, sp and speaking of timing, we're going to get into some things about route trees and wide receivers and timing and whatnot later on in the show. I want to break it down. I broke down like Tampa 2 defense last week and uh, that, that drive the Packers had against Dallas. And this week I'm going to break down route trees wide receivers and whatnot. Zeke is suspended. No, he's not. Okay, he's suspended again. No, he's not. He's back. And it looks like he's going to see two games. So if you have him, you just got to squeeze what you can out of him and then sit him on your bench and, I don't know, hope that he can play the rest of the year, but probably not. You can't trade him because everybody already knows he's probably going to get suspended again. So we'll see what happens there. Mark Ingram? New life in Nolens. Now that he's the lead back, he's the lead dog, he's tearing it up. And it was a good trade for him, and it was a good trade for Peterson, who also teared it up this week with Arizona. And now he's heading overseas to London for a game against the Rams. So we'll see if he can show consistency and see if he has another big game over there. It was a good trade for both of them. 
the Cardinals need Peterson to continue to, you know, race for the playoffs and hold it down while David Johnson is out. And Mark Ingram, you know, he, he seems to thrive when he's just, you know, the lead guy. And, and they have Kamara for the third down, you know, the third downs, and, and it works for him. And I think it's just better. It was just too convoluted with him in the pitcher, uh, with Adrian Peterson in the pitcher. Uh, Dolphins got the win over the Falcons, and I think how they were able to do that is it seems like they're going into two tight end sets, and they're using Fasano to block more. And so they went from 2.9 yards per carry to 4.8 with Ajayi. So they found the running game a little bit, and of course that's going to help Cutler, and their defense is playing great. Cameron Jordan's playing great. So, you know, Miami, they get the win against the Titans, they get the win against Atlanta, and, uh, but I mean, come on. I still think $10 million was too much for Jay, and I think they should just play more. And also, I don't think they're a playoff team. Um, So we'll see what happens with Miami, but... uh, (sighs) Yeah, and I guess it helps when you don't have, you know, your offensive line coaches, you know, doing a bunch of blow, and then suddenly the running game starts working again. So we'll see what happens. We talked about Fournette last week, and I told you how much of a beast he was and how fast he ran, and he was clocked on that 90-yard run that he took off on at 22.05 miles per hour. And his other big run was at like 20 or 21 miles per hour. So the guy gets up there. He's got the Jets too. Um We'll, we'll stay on running backs for a second here. I want to talk about Orleans Darkwa. I saw that he was picked up by 51,000 people in fantasy. And I'm not high on him. I'll just be honest with you. Because I, I don't believe the Giants just suddenly figured out how to run. I don't think that it's going to continue. And when I look at his schedule, I see he's got Seattle, which is a strong front. And then he has a bye week. And then he has, you know, Washington, I think, after that. So, you know, I, these are tough defenses, and then it's, then you got to buy in the mix. So if you're picking them up, I mean, if you're in desperate need for a running back, then it makes sense, I guess. And, I, you know, you take the risk, but I, I'm not high on him. I, I don't believe I, – I think if he was the running back, it, he would have been the starter already. And then Paul Perkins is going to get healthier, and who knows what Gallman – they still like Gallman. They're still going to give him snaps. So, you know, it's kind of like Seattle's backfield. They, Thomas Rawls, Eddie Lacy, C.J. Procise, well, what, are you doing, what are you doing? Who, who do you pick? You, nobody knows. And it's like the Ravens' backfield a little bit. Collins has been the lead back there, but who knows when they're going to decide to put West back in it. So, yeah, I'm not big on Darkwa for a pickup. Um, but let's go. Let's move forward. Let's get inside the numbers a little bit. Top corner this week was Jonathan Joseph. One of the top edge rushers this week was Cameron Jordan. Um, the Saints and the Lions both had big games on defense, and there was points flying all over the place. But a Sean Robinson and Craig Robertson, guys like that, they both came They both came to play, and they've been getting high grades and high numbers. The best tight end through week six was um, Hunter Henry, it looks like, or Austin Hooper also was up there. Uh, so we'll see what, what goes there. Gronk is still the best tight end overall for the pro football numbers through, weeks, through week six, but for week six, it looked like Hunter Henry did a really well, uh, well-done job. So Matt Ryan for quarterback, Mariota for quarterback, um, they were both really efficient. Um, Matt Ryan didn't get the win, but he was still efficient. Tom Brady was efficient, and Mariota had a great game on um, Monday night. It, uh, and he couldn't leave the pocket. He couldn't scramble because of the hamstring injury. So I think he'll he'll be getting better as the season goes on. You know, because he'll have more mobility. You know, you know, you know, you know. And I'm trying to say you know 205, 205 times on this show. So count them out. You know. All right, let's move forward. New segment alert. Football 101, last week we talked Tampa 2, we talked the Packers' last drive against the Cowboys and how the players on the Dallas Cowboy defense weren't efficient. And they're not efficient in that system and how I think that they should change their system. This this week we're talking <coughs> route trees. So you might hear that term dropped in conversation between analysts or you know in different articles or whatnot, a route tree. It's for a wide receiver or running back or tight end, somebody who's going out to catch a pass. And basically, you know, imagine that a wide receiver is a squirrel and he's running up a tree. Okay, and there's branches. Each one of those branches is a different route. It's a different direction the receiver can go to catch a pass. So if you draw a straight line on a piece of paper, you can put a nine at the top of that line. That's a go route. That's a nine route um, or a fly route. Um, it's also called other things, verts, uh, Hail Marys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you start at the bottom of the tree at the base of the tree, you have the first two branches being inside and outside. It's always, you know, for the most part, besides the fly or the sluggo, which the sluggo is a combination of a slant route and like an up route, it, you know, because you can combine different routes to make new routes. It's like Pokemon. 
And no, it's not. And so if we start at the base of the tree and we have the branches, we start with the first branch. We'll go off in the flats towards the out of bounds. And that'll be like a one. And that's a short route. And usually running backs, tight ends, and slot receivers, they do flat routes. It's something, you know, you got to get rid of the ball quick. Maybe there's a blitz. You can also start there immediately by hiking the ball, throwing the ball to the left, and doing a tunnel or a screen. It's where the wide receiver kind of stays where he is or he comes back towards the quarterback and he tunnels in. So the offensive line pulls out, he gets behind him, and it's like it's what the Patriots do a lot. It's an expansion of the run game. It, quick passes, get people out in space, guys like Tyreek Hill, guys like Chris Thompson, you know, get them, you know, Jesus, get them in space and let them do their thing. As you go further up the tree, you have the out route and the in route or the dig route. So you're going straight, and then you're taking a cut to the out of bounds to the sidelines, or you're taking a cut inside. And those those routes, you know, they take a lot of, you know, there's three things to a good wide receiver and good route running. One being footwork. They have to be precise. They have to plant. They have to, you know, be very quick with their feet because you got to dig. When I when I talk about these out routes and these in routes, you're going up, and then you're quickly cutting in or you're cutting out. If you're cutting out, it's usually maybe you're it's time sensitive and you need to get out of bounds. And so that's where the footwork comes in when you're cutting. And I mean, it comes in with a slant too. It comes in with all the routes. But there's three things. It's, it's footwork, it's deception or the sail, I like to call it, because you can go off like you're doing a straight go route and then, you know, with some head movement, you know, fake like you're going in for a slant or fake like you're going in for a post and then with some head movement, continue going forward. Maybe you, you know, do something where you kind of hesitate and act like it's a run, but it's actually a pass. So you start off like it's a pass, moving a lot, and then you stop like you're going to block, and then you keep going. And so it's like a stop and go. And Cole Beasley does that really well. So it, footwork, the sail, and then the third thing is, I, I'm going to call it timing, chemistry with the quarterback. Because when you go further up the tree, now we're past the outs and the ins, and we start getting to the comebacks and the hitches. Now a comeback is you're going up and you're coming back, but you're coming back towards the quarterback, but you're coming back towards the sidelines. And a hitch route or a curl route, you're coming back more towards the middle of the field. And so you've got to be really good with the footwork. And not only good with the footwork, but you've got to be able to plant that foot in turn before the corner plants his foot. So a quarterback can see that, okay, he's got the plant, he's got the plant before the corner. And that's the goal for, like, the Packers do it a lot. Jordy Nelson will go out for a pass, he'll plant his foot and turn in, and the corner will always be a step behind. So it's really hard to beat. And it's the same thing with these comebacks. It's really great for back shoulder fades. A back shoulder fade is basically if you got a guy standing towards, you know, another guy, and they're both facing each other, right? Uh, if you throw it towards that left shoulder, the guy has to come over the other shoulder. He has to come over the guy to get the pass. It's harder to reach. The guys that don't have a lot of length, they'll beat him with those back shoulder fades. It's really hard. It's one of the hardest passes to defend because you're either going to get a pass interference for climbing over the guy or you just won't be able to reach the ball. And that's where timing comes into play because if a quarterback can release the ball before the guy turns around and then he turns around and it's right there, How's the defender going to know? And quarterbacks and wide receivers all have different timing. They have different steps, and there's tons of variations to these routes. So the route tree, when people talk about a route tree, they're talking about, you know, basic, simple, you know, routes, but there's so many variations to it. For example, if you bunch have a bunch set, it means you have, like, three wide receivers on one side of the field, and maybe a couple of them are basically just setting screens, like in basketball, setting picks, or they're doing a route to clear space. Two guys on the inside head towards the middle of the field while the guy on the outside heads up and it's one-on-one -on -one matchup and some somebody like Chris Hogan's really good at that they they like to use him vertically while they use their other receivers or cooks vertically and use their other receivers to set picks you know and, and pick setting picks is illegal but you know it still happens every game every team pretty much and they try to get away with it as much as possible you can also use tight ends in in different bunch sets and whatnot so there's so many variations but as we continue going up the tree and we're, we're going off on these different branches we have, you know, towards the top of the tree, the corner and the post. This is the seven and eight. So we went one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're at seven and eight, post and corner. And so the post route is when, you, when you're going all the way straight and you're, and you're going deep, maybe 10, 15 yards, maybe a little bit uh, shorter than that. And then you're cutting towards the middle of the field. You're trying to get the inside of the safety. And uh, depending on what the defense is playing, you know, a post route can be very effective, especially if you can get that safety to bite on a run or bite on, you know, another receiver. And when I say bite, it means they start going towards a place they don't need to be. Um, it's a fake. You know, quarterbacks will pump fake to one side of the field just to get the safety to bite. 
and then they'll throw to the other side or whatnot, or they'll throw to a different receiver. And then on the other, on the flip side of it, that back shoulder fade comes into play again, where you have a corner route, and then those are used in reds in the red zone a lot because you get a receiver like AJ Green running up at the top of the tree, and then he cuts off towards the sidelines, and it's back shoulder fade, and it's only him, and you can't reach him. Um, and so, and you get PIs like that. And then at the very top of the tree, you have the go route, which is basically you're just climbing all the way. You're just going straight, and they're throwing it. And if it's a one-on-one situation with Dez, you're throwing it all day. You, you know, you got a guy like Dez who's really good at certain routes. And to talk about, like, who's good at what routes, when we, when we talk about slant routes, you want a physical receiver because he's either going get to get to the inside and just catch the ball with physicality or, you know, they're going to have such quick feet that you can't, you can't get there in time. Um, when we're talking about in routes or digs where they're heading to they're going up a little further and then heading across the middle of the field Julio Jones is really good at that when you're talking about corner routes like I said AJ Green vertical routes guys that are just sent go straight up Dez is really good at that Deshaun Jackson is really good at that you put your speedster on on the go routes a lot you try to get uh, you know maybe you do it so much during the game that you try to get the safety to keep playing them going deep with Deshaun Jackson, then you use Adam Humphreys in the pocket because the safety's occupied because they sent a wide receiver way up the field. But there's so many variations to these route trees to where, you know, there's even like slants that are really extended, you know, crossing plays, crossing patterns. And what happens on a crossing pattern is the receiver starts on the left side of the field in, or the right, and he goes all the way across the field. He drags, that's what they call it also. And while he's dragging, that defender has to follow him across the field but while he's following him he's got to you know get through all his own guys the linebackers that are in their zones he's got to run around them he's got to figure out a a clear path to to stay with this guy so crossing patterns can be effective because you can use the only the the other team's defense against themselves again you can use it against them you know use their setups against them so all these variations uh have to you know take place during a game and there's so many different teams and like the patriots really like to use passing and and as an extension to the run game. A lot of teams are using read options and they're, you know, and they're applying different, you know, variations and techniques to it. So when you watch a game next time and they talk about route trees, or if they don't talk about route trees and you just notice how a receiver runs a route, you'll see, maybe look around at the other receivers and see how they cleared that space or see what the safety did on the play. And from that, you'll be able to tell what defenses have good communications, because if you got guys not where they're supposed to be and they're getting beat deep and all, you know, consistently, then you'll you'll know that there's some com- com- fuck. Because speaking of communication, you'll know that there's some communication problems and there's some breakdowns. Patriots are having some of those problems. Atlanta's having some of those problems now. So you know, and I guess it will help you in fantasy if you know what defenses you're going up against. Scheme wise, uh, it's a little deeper to go into, but you know, just in talent alone, if you got a guy like Richard Sherman, is really good at uh, defending, you know, certain routes like slant routes. And Jonathan Joseph is really good at, you know, comebacks and whatnot. Terrence Newman used to be really good. I think he's pretty, probably still pretty good at comebacks and hitches and whatnot. So, so right, the defenders know what the route tree is too. And so they try to predict it by watching film the week ahead. So now you know. But the three things to make a, a play happen for a receiver, for a, for a completion to happen, it's gotta, it's gotta, they have to have that footwork, like Antonio Brown-type footwork. They have to have the deception, the head movement. Maybe they bob and move their head like they're going up the field and they cut in. I don't know. Maybe they act like they're cutting in, and then they bob and move their head. And you'll see tight ends do it a lot with head movement. Jason Witten's really good with it. He's a veteran. He knows how to just use the, the head movement to get wide open. It's crazy because he's slow, but he, but he can get open with the head movement. And then the timing. You know, Are you in sync with the quarterback? Can you play catch in the dark? Can you, you turn around and the ball's there and nobody even knew? That's those are all the things that make good receivers. They, Julio Jones and Matt Ryan are really in sync. Des Bryant and Dak Prescott, not so much right now, but they're getting better at it. So that's the route tree, you little squirrel. You fucking little squirrel. Did you get your nut? All right. Uh, game game picks. Let's just move right into the game picks. We'll give you the game picks this week. Well, like I said, we're forty nine and forty. It's terrible. We we need to win every game this week because it's pathetic. It's pathetic how bad we are at game picks right now. So we'll get into the game picks. I'll give you the survivor pick. I'll give you the weekly fantasy lineup. And then I'm out the fucking door. Because it's, it's, it's a winter wonderland out here. I got shit I got to take care of. 
Um, my fantasy league is imploding. There's literally 200 trades every fucking five minutes and it's impossible to manage. And I've got, of course, I've got my hands all up in it and, and it doesn't make anybody happy. So uh, all, all sorts of things to handle. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get through here. We'll, 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 we'll continue. Week seven game picks. We're starting with the Chiefs and the Raiders on Thursday night. My pick is the Chiefs. I've seen some people picking the Raiders. They're like, oh, this is the week the Raiders win. I'm picking the Chiefs 29-23. Their defense is going to come back to life. I don't know what it did last week against uh, Le'Veon Bell, but it's going to come back this week. I think they win 29-23. Bills and Bucks. We don't know what's going on with Jameis Winston in that shoulder. I think he's trying to play. I'm going to give the game to the Bills. Uh, they're coming off a bye, and LaShawn McCoy is going to get a lot of carries. Tyrod Taylor is going to have a good game. Uh, Bills and Bucks, 2013 Bills. Panthers, Bears, I'm going to give this game to the Panthers. Cam Newton, I, Benjamin got hurt in practice today. So I hope he's okay. He's on my fantasy team. And also, he, he's a big part of that offense. He's a big red zone threat. He's a guy that they were throwing the ball to, I think, 11 or 12 times last week. So they're starting to get him the ball a lot, and now that he's hurt again, who knows what's going to happen. I'm still going to go with the Panthers. Their defense is really good. It's a rookie quarterback on the other end. Yeah, I know they beat the Ravens last week, and I picked against them. I'm going to pick them again, against them again. Panthers over the Bears. I don't know, 28-13. to 13. Titans and Browns, i got to give it to the Titans. I'm not going to go with the Browns with the upset pick. It's kind of tempting because of Mariota's, you know, ability, inability to move around. Um, I'll give it to the Titans, though, 23-20. to 20. Saints and Packers. Packers have a backup quarterback. What are they going to do? I'm going to go with the hot hand. I'm going to go with the Saints. Their defense played out of their mind last week against Stafford, who's a much better quarterback than Brett Hundley. I know the Packers have a lot of weapons, and they're probably going to lean on Ty Montgomery and, and Aaron Jones a lot. I'm going to give it to the Saints. I think they'll do good. I think they'll do good enough to win 23-17. to 17. Uh, Without Aaron Rodgers, who are the Packers? And that's what we're going to find out. I don't think they're very much. So, salty. Jaguars and Colts, I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I know they're up and down, up and down, up and down. A lot of people are picking the Colts. Uh... But they're up and down, up and down, up and down. So they won last week, right? No. They lost last week to the Rams. So yeah, so people are expecting them to... to Wait, what? Jag, Jags played the Rams last week. Hold on, let me fucking... Fi- hold on. Let me figure this out. And they lost, right? Yeah. So they should win this week. No, that's why I'm going to pick them. 20-10. to 10. Jaguars over the Colts. Rams, Cardinals in London... See if Adrian Peterson can repeat the performance. Uh, most people are picking the Cardinals. I'm going to go with the Rams. I think their offense is going to be... Uh, Peterson is questionable. Patrick Peterson is questionable. If he doesn't play, it makes my pick. I'm even more confident in it. But I'm going with the Rams anyways, 28-27. Jets, Dolphins. I'm going to go with the Jets, 23-13. to I don't think the Dolphins will keep it going two weeks in a row. I know they've beaten some good teams now, but Jay Culler's going to throw a pick or two. The Jets are going to win 23-13. to Again, they're going to enjoy that warm weather too. Vikings and Ravens. I'll go with the I'll go with the Vikings. I can't pick the Ravens. Sorry. 12-6. It'll be a low-scoring game. Two good defenses. Uh, McKinnon. He's going to get in space. He'll probably have a touchdown. Diggs might be st- still sitting on the sidelines for that game because of a groin, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to go with the Vikings though. Steelers and Bengals. A divisional matchup is a matchup I think a lot of people have been waiting for. They haven't played each other yet. Uh, so it should be pretty good. Have they played each other yet, Steelers and Bengals? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they haven't. So, But I'm going to go with the Steelers 27-20 to 20 in this game. Uh, they're going to lean on Bell, and he's going to do the job. Cowboys and Niners, 23-19 uh, to 19 Cowboys. The Niners could have been an upset pick here with a rookie quarterback. I just And Zeke playing now, I'll give it to the Cowboys for the win. Chargers, Broncos, this is the upset pick. I'm going with the Chargers. Because I think what happened with Denver last week continues another week. I think they've got some rust and they've got some kinks they need to work out. Mine might be crazy. They are, you know, the Chargers are playing at home, which isn't much of a home. I'm sure there'll be more Broncos, Broncos fans there than anything. But I'm going to go with the Chargers in the upset pick. Seahawks, Giants, I'll go with the Seahawks, 21-17 over the Giants. Patriots, Falcons, I'll go with the Patriots in the win there. And Sunday night, it will be a good matchup. The Falcons are going to obviously be riled up for the match. Uh, the match, like they're fighting, riled up for the game, but I don't think they have what it takes to beat the Patriots. Tom Brady, will uh, he's already familiar with that defense, and he'll do a good job there, and he'll have a few touchdowns. I'll probably have three. It might, be a gun, it might be a shootout. It might be a Wild West showdown. We'll see. Patriots are the pick. Eagles and Redskins Monday night, another good matchup. Two primetime matchups this week. Three primetime matchups, really, that are all you know spectacular, to be honest with you. And the Eagles-Redskins, another hard-hitting matchup. Divisional matchup. This game, I expect to see some heads flying. 
And I'm going to go with the Eagles, though. Carson Wentz is playing very well, very well on third downs. He's converting everything. The defense is getting after quarterbacks. I think the Eagles get after Kirk Cousins, and, he, and they give him hell. And uh, so I'm going to go with the Eagles there. So those are the picks for Week 7. Hopefully we improve the record from 49 and 40 to something better. I don't know. Survivor picks, I'm going to go with the Chiefs and the Titans. Those are my two survivor picks, Mo- mostly the Titans. I think it's really difficult this week. I didn't want to go with somebody like the Patriots because who knows with the Falcons, they're going to be pretty riled up for that game. And I didn't really want to go with, you know, a lot of these divisional matchups that are happening. It's hard there. You could say Vikings too, but in, in this scenario, I will go with the Titans. Um, I probably should have kept track for myself to see if I got knocked out, but I, I will just say I didn't. <laughs> It'll be easier that way. All right, weekly fantasy picks. So we're going to get to it, to the to the, to the the nitty-gritty. What do we got here for weekly fantasy? Well, for quarterback, uh, it was tough. There was some tough picks. I'm going to go with Carson Palmer. I think the Rams are going to put a lot of points up on the board, and it'll you know make a situation for Palmer to throw it a lot. I'm going to go with him. The price is right at 6,600. Then I'll go with McKinnon as a running back. Adrian Peterson will ride, we'll ride the hot hand there and see if you know he can get some yards. L.A.'s got a bad run defense, so he should do well. I'm going to go with Des Bryant against San Francisco. He should have a field day. He really should have a field day. Uh, for 7,800, we'll take it. Pierre Garçon should also have a field day against Dallas's pass defense. And they're one of the worst pass defenses in the league. Somehow they're ranked 23rd, but I feel like they're worse than that. Uh, they were also on a bye, so that probably helped their, helped their ranking a bit. Pierre Garçon's the second wide receiver. My third wide receiver is going to be Alan Hearns. Don't ask me why. I mean, for 4,100, I went with it. Uh, we'll see what happens. The uh, Colts' pass defense is not very good right now, so I'll go with the matchup, the advantage of the matchup there. Jimmy Graham at tight end against New York. Um, this is New York's probably the worst team against tight ends. Cleveland and New York are the worst teams against tight ends, so I'm definitely going to go with Jimmy Graham there. He has the capability of putting up a touchdown or two in this game. Derek, Derek Henry is going to be my flex because I think with Murray having injury issues, or kind of being hampered by things. They're going to keep giving Henry the rock. And against Cleveland, if they get up on him, they're just going to want to run the clock out. So I'm going to give Henry the uh, flex play there because I think he can rack up some points and maybe a touchdown. And then my defense is going to be the Steelers against the Bengals because the Steelers are good at getting sacks, and uh, Andy Dalton's good at taking them. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give it to the Steelers there. This should be a good matchup, though. I, don't, I picked the Steelers, but, you know, it's, it's a division matchup. So it's a divisional matchup, and who knows what's going to happen. How many times can I say matchup? Uh, how many times can I say you know? Uh, were you surprised by the number? Did you rewind it back and count it and let me know? But that's the episode. Like I said, oh, it's kind of condensed. I mean, 27 minutes. We're rolling through, uh, you know, shorter than usual. Shorter than usual. I could have spent time talking about a lot of things. But like I said, I'm, I'm wasting time right now. Episode 7. It's in the books. We'll see how the record plays out. You can hit me up and hit us up on Twitter at RowdyPiffPod or at MonsterPiff. I'm on Twitter all day. Every single day, every second, I see everything. Fucking block, I'll block you if you talk shit. And then also go on YouTube and search us, Rowdy and the Piff. It's a podcast. The audio's on there. There's a picture to look at while you're listening. It's cool. It's got a goose and it's got a goat. And we're on Instagram. And, you know, Apple Podcasts, the app, you gotta fucking, you know, you gotta review that shit. You know, I see you guys. I see the subscribers. I see people clicking on it. I don't know what's going on with these reviews, but they're not happening. So get on there, review it. Give me a good review. Or let me know what I'm doing wrong. Tell me I'm a piece of shit. I don't know. Drop a comment on YouTube. Drop a comment on Twitter. Do they, they don't even do comments on Twitter. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, hit the thumbs up. If I explain this to my dad the other day, you click the little thumb underneath the window. He said, I did, I did that. I said, no, you didn't. There's only, there's one like, and it was me, myself. No, I did. I, I clicked it. He don't even fucking like my show. So, but if you like it, click the little thumb. So that's the show. And until next time, we'll say, hey, we might have special guests next week. You know, we might have special, we have special guests all the time. Klein Chopperfield, Cheeto Santoro, he's a little, he's in, he's in the doghouse right now. He was talking reckless last week, talking all kinds of uh, borderline shit. So he might not be back for a little while. But we got these characters that always want to show up to my shit and they want to take the center stage. And I'm like, I'll give it to them because you know why not. That's a show. I'm Piff. This was The Blitz. Episode seven's in the books. Enjoy your fucking week of football. My fantasy league's about to um, blow up. It's imploding. Worse than the Falcons in the Super Bowl. I got to go fucking see what I can do. I'm out. Oh.
So I ran up in the building, talking way back. I stay late night, dreaming about the payback. All I wanna do is get rich, yeah, 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 yo. I ain't looking for a lick, hey, 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 yo. About to rob him for the shit, hey, 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 yo. Want to roll me on the wrist, hey.